Okay, so next we're going to look at pencils, of which there is a huge plethora of options and different types available. This can be really confusing at times, and it's easy to fall into the trap of automatically buying the most expensive ones you can find, thinking that that's the better ones to get. If you buy high quality pencils, then you should get a high quality product, and there's certainly no doubt about that. But sometimes buying really, really expensive equipment can stop people from even getting started because they don't want to wreck the expensive item that they've purchased. So I highly recommend looking at lots of different brands of pencils. I buy an awful lot of these little cheap ones and it doesn't even matter what brand it is, it's more important to know what grade it is. So grading is one of the big factors when it comes to deciding what pencils to buy. Pencils range from 9H all the way to 9B with H standing for hardness and B standing for soft. It's important to have an understanding of the hardness of your pencil because it can have a big impact on the values possible from those that particular pencil. The grade of your pencil is a huge factor because it determines what sort of values you can get out of it. The thing is though is that between brands this grading doesn't always correlate. So a HB Derwent may not necessarily give you exactly the same grades or tones as a HB Faber-Castell or a HB Cheap Pencil. So that's why I really recommend trying out your pencils and paper and trying them out together so you can get a really good idea of exactly what pencils are going to give you. For instance, I just recently bought a set of pencils from an art shop and the H pencils, which should be really light and not have much tone to them, were actually quite dark. And I've bought other pencils, which are a HB, and really it's come out more like a 3H, which is quite light. And it would ruin the paper to try and get a dark value out of it. So in the next video, I'm going to do a demo to demonstrate some of the pencils that I have, of which I have hundreds. <laughs> I won't do them all, don't worry. And to give you an idea of different factors to look at and what to consider. So that's it. On to the demo. <gasps> okay, so let's talk about pencils. To start off with here, I've just done a little example of all the pencils in this set here which is the cheaper set that I got from Audi and they range from 5H to 6B and if you have a look down here at these H pencils you can see that they're actually still quite dark there's not a huge variety of tones through here I've done another example here which is with some other pencils that I've got to try and match them up. These H tones are quite a bit lighter and there's quite a variety of tones through here. So this is why it's important to check out pencils. If we have a look here, this is the 5H from this side and that's the 5H from this side and you can see it's actually quite a bit lighter. Another thing to watch out for is if we look at these two pencils this one here is from a set of these Mars pencils. This one here is from single stock. They're both AB pencils. But if we have a look at this down here, this is actually this 8B pencil that came from the set. And this square here, which is black, I'm not sure how well that comes out on video, is black like a charcoal pencil. This, is sing this was single stock. And if I have a look at the two pencils together, they have exactly the same numbers on them. I'm not sure why they like that. I've heard a few people say that these Mars pencils are, have an additive or something in them to make them black. So I'm not really sure why the set doesn't and this one does. So it's important to be mindful of what you're buying, particularly if you buy a particular brand and then don't buy them again for a long time. Uh, I wouldn't assume that they're using the same formula. So, pencils come in a wide range. This here is the 9H in the Derwent set, and I probably never buy at this extreme end. 
In fact, I probably wouldn't get anything higher than a 3H. And even then, I don't really tend to use those either. So that makes it a bit easier. It cuts down the range of pencils that you need to look at quite a bit. And on the other end, whilst they can go all the way up to 9B, this is the only 9B I've got at the moment, you probably don't really require that either. Um, you can generally get just as good darks out of a 6B. So if I had to choose a set of pencils, I would go for something like a HB, a 2B, a 4B, and a 6. And on the other end, I would go with a H, a 2H, and that is about it. That's my personal preference. A lot of people sometimes use the 4Hs as well to give themselves a little bit more variety. These pencils here are quite similar, so if I had to cut it down even more, I would go with a 6B. I'd get rid of the 4B, I'd have my 2B, my HB, and my H, I'd get rid of the 4B. These are the pencils that I'd mainly use. These are actually the pencils that I mainly use. Uh, they give you a good variety of tones there. And sometimes whilst a HB could give you the same tones as a H and a 2H, sometimes it's about control. It can be a lot easier to get a lighter tone out of the harder pencils because um, if we take for instance this 6B, when I brush it lightly on the paper, it actually comes up quite dark anyway. Whereas if I brush the 2H lightly on the paper, it's easier to get that lighter tone. So a lot of the times having the variety of different hardnesses has to do with control. The other factor is that if we look at this uh, 6B and we do a square of color, a tone, sorry, you can see, I'm, well, I'm not sure if you can tell, but it hasn't filled, it's just gone on the surface. It hasn't filled in all the gaps. So if I get a HB, sometimes it's easier to get that dark color because the harder pencil will get down into the grain of the paper a little bit easier. So there's different factors there, but you have to press harder. It ruins the paper faster. So things to think about and you'll, understand that more as you practice it depends on you quite a bit it's going to be an individual thing so don't stress about that too much but that's the reason why we use a variety of pencils price is not a massive factor in pencils especially when it comes to hbs and 2bs and all that sort of jazz so some some of my favorite pencils are actually cheap, super cheap pencils. If we have a look at this one here, this is just like a super cheap pencil I got from like a $2 shop or something. And it has a really great variety of easy to get tones. It's nice and soft. And it has a nice dynamic to it I think because it's really nice and quite soft whilst still being firm enough that you can get that really nice dark without having to push too hard because it gets down into the tooth of the paper so cheap pencils have their place this is just a HB when I travel I quite often will take this pencil with me because it is really nice to sketch with because I can easily get that wide variety of tones 
I also really like these triangular junior pencils. They're really comfortable to use. They're mm, probably mid-range because they're more expensive school type pencils. But they're really, really soft and juicy. And they have a nice range of tones as well that you can get out of them quite easily. They're really comfortable to use and they have good control. But even if we look at something like this IKEA pencil, it's harder, so it's not quite as nice to use. You can get a easier, lighter tones out of it because it's more like a H pencil than a HB. Um, and you can still do quite a lot with this pencil. So don't be too worried about how much they cost. Of course, if you buy the higher quality pencils or the more expensive pencils, you're probably going to get a nicer pencil overall. That's the way the world works generally. Not always, but generally. Um, I find the more expensive pencils, the B pencils, are just really nice and soft and luscious feeling. And maybe they're not quite like that with the cheaper pencils. I would say this set from out this set from Audi cost uh, four or five dollars, and this set of Mars pencils, which is only six, cost more like ten to fifteen dollars. I think it might have been twelve dollars or something like that. That's in Australian dollars. So there's a big difference there, and all those pencils are totally usable. So it's up to you what you want to do, but yeah. That's not to say though that all cheap pencils are really good. These pencils here that I got in the same bulk bunch of pencils that I bought before, um, they are kind of crappy and they have this problem that I really don't like either and when you sharpen it, the wood here all breaks away. Sometimes that has to do with your sharpener but it has quite a bit to do with your pencil as well. So that's also an important factor. You can get quite a nice bit of tone out of them, but I'm not quite sure if you can see it here. Maybe if I do a really nice big patch. Mm, it's not really showing up, but the whole time I was doing that, there's actually like a bit of grit in here, and it's making this horrible scratch across the line. It's a real shame that you can't see that, but that's also damaging your paper, and it can be unfixable. Um, those lines don't go away when you erase either. They hang around, and it's really not very good. So if you do come across a cheap pencil that's gritty, don't use it in your drawings at all. Um, not ever. You never know when that grit's going to come up. So these pencils here are relegated for household use and that's all I use them for. They don't ever come near my drawings. Um, another thing is, is that I recently bought these pencils and they're not too bad, but they have this weird feeling to them. So that's going to be a big factor for you as well, whether you like the pencil or not. And I'm not sure if you can tell here, but when I run it out, it kind of has like this plasticky look to it and I'd say that must be the binder it's like ultra smooth it's really hard to explain anyway I'm never gonna buy these pencils again I'm not sure what's going on there this that's a 2b version and this is a HB pe pencil and they're both sort of similar it's almost like when you use a pen and it feels like it's running out so I don't know what the binder is that they use in them but uh, that's something to think about if I just compare it with another 2B pencil you can see how much darker that is and for the HB yeah so it's a lot darker this is just another HB student pencil um, you can get an awful lot of options. This is like a 7B and really it's not that much more different than the 6B. So I probably would um, would not bother with it. I just have it because yeah, I buy a random assortment of pencils all the time. 
So another way I can just quickly illustrate the big differences here is if I just flip this over so we've got a nice clean piece of paper. These are two tonal charts that I made for these two different pencils. And this is what we're going to be making for our project, except we're just going to do a general one. Here you can see this is a H pencil, and you can see that this is the darkest dark, and I pressed quite hard to get that. And then down to the lightest, and this is a 6B pencil. It's really, really dark, and as you come along, it's really light. Something else to look at, it illustrates here as well, is how it's not getting into the tooth of the paper. It looks quite grainy. And here, this H pencil looks a bit smoother. It does get down into the, the tooth of the paper. So, there are um, just a couple of other pencils that I want to touch on before we go. That is mechanical pencils. And they are great for sketching. This is a HB lead, I think. Let me double check. Yep, a HB number two, apparently. But they're a size seven. I like the thicker leads in them because the thinner ones, uh, I think, are just overkill. Like, they're over thin. They're great for sketching. They really give you a good variety. The good quality ones, the leads. Good quality leads give you a really nice variety and again you're probably going to have to try out all the different brands if you want to go this way but uh, the main reason why I don't use them that often is because there's not a huge variety in line so you pretty much get this line and that's it and you can't sharpen it you can use the edge and stuff a bit but that's pretty much what you're going to get. You can't get that thicker line. You can't like lay the pencil over. You can't lay that over and shade like this if you want to. Um, you're kind of limited. So I use them a bit for sketching, especially when I'm out and about, because I can put them in my bag and push the lead back in. And I know the lead's safe and I can carry a bunch of leads with me and not a sharpener. The other type of pencils are another type of pencils that you can get. This one here is actually a water soluble one, and that just means the binder is water soluble. Graphite isn't actually water soluble, but the binder that holds this pencil together is water soluble, so you can move the minuscule grains of graphite around. And um, these are really great, can be really great for sketching because you can lay them over and do some um, really nice big tones but they're hard to sharpen I wouldn't recommend them personally myself I don't use them a lot I bought this one for a specific experimenting I was doing so and you might have seen that I use this one um, I bought this specifically for something else that I was doing as well and they're okay but I'm not sure that I'm really going to use it that much maybe I use it for life drawing could be nice for life drawing I think uh, but it's dirty and this one's water soluble as well but they're impossible to sharpen and if you do sharpen them you use up so much of that graphite trying to sharpen it so yeah I'm not a big fan I am a bit of a fan of normal pencils, I have to admit. And last thing I remembered just then that I wanted to talk about was these random sizes, F and... Where are we? B. So yeah, I just want to talk about these random ones, F and B. So B is soft, obviously. F is for fine. Apparently, I think you're supposed to be able to get a finer point on these. But I use F and B pencils interchangeably with my HB pencils. They're kind of about at that grade. And if I don't have a HB, then that's what I'll use. Um, I don't buy them in single stock. I wouldn't buy them in single stock because you don't really need them. I just buy HB. But uh, like this one came in this kit, so when it comes to using it up, I'll just use it instead of a HB, pretty much. So that's it, and that's what I do with these F1s as well, use it instead of a HB. 
So that's about it. Thanks very much.